Hi everyone, Wizarding Journey here, and today I'm going to show you how to make Himigo's Toga's blood sucking machine. But before we get into this video, I just wanted to thank every single one of you. Last year in December, we actually hit 200 subscribers, and now we're almost at 300. So thank you so much for subscribing. I really wouldn't know what I would do without you guys. So yeah, I know it's been a really long time since I have made one of my videos, but now I'm going back into it. So sorry for the really long wait, but I have a question for you guys. Would you be interested in seeing some con vlogs? I'm going to Anime Expo and Anime Manga this year. I already went to Anime Los Angeles, but I didn't film anything there because I was just there with my friends and we just had fun and I totally forgot about filming. But would you guys be interested in seeing AX and Annie Manga um, videos? For Annie Manga, I'm actually doing Artist Alley, so I could do like a behind the scenes kind of thing, I guess. <laughs> but yeah, so. Or do you guys want to see more cosplay videos just like this one? So if you guys are interested, put a thumbs up on this video and put a comment down below what kind of videos you guys want to see. So that's kind of it. Um, yeah, basically, so let's get on to the video. So first you're going to need a piece of cardboard. Now, preferably this should be a bigger piece of cardboard because you need a lot of cardboard to make this scarf base. So first you're going to cut off the sides of the cardboard. We'll lay it flat first and then cut off the sides and so that you have one giant long piece. Next, you're going to take a ruler and make little slits along it, and I kind of eyeballed it, but it was around 1 to 2 centimeters each apart, and this allows it to bend the cardboard more easily and make it look more flawless. You just have to go through with your X-Acto knife once, and then it's basically cut the point where you can bend it. Now, I didn't show this, but I actually sprayed great stuff on top of the cardboard so that it would have a three-dimensional feel. So what you're going to do, you're going to let it dry to touch, and then you're going to bend the cardboard so that it's in the shape of the scarf how you want it. You have to do this because once it's dry, you cannot move it, so it's really essential that you bend it once it's dry to touch. Once the great stuff is completely dry, you can actually start carving it with a Stanley knife or any type of knife really and just carve it till the point you actually like it. But just remember to carve in a groove where you want to place the teeth so they, they kind of look indented into the um, blood sucking machine just like Toga actually has it. Next, you want to get some really strong glue. I actually used Gorilla Glue, but you can use E6000 Gorilla Glue. Um, basically, any type of glue, fabric glue will even work. But you're just going to take fleece and place it on top of it with the glue, and that's what's going to keep the fabric in place. Now make sure that one of where the fabrics overlap, that's where one of the of the syringes goes on top so that it kind of covers that seam. Talking about the syringes, let's get into how we make those. So I got this 60 milliliter kind of syringe off of Amazon. Um, if I can remember, I'll put a link down below. But basically what you're going to do is cut off the tip of the syringe so that you're just left with a little stump. And then you're going to take the entire syringe apart and cut off the base of the syringe. And then you're going to take the back part that kind of pushes the liquid up from the syringe. You're going to take that black little part, cut that off, and that's what we're going to put at the end so that you can't see into the syringe. Next, you're going to sand this syrin these syringes so that it's not as sharp because some of these plastic pieces do break off and it does leave a sharp edge so just sand them i used an electric sander but you can easily do this by hand with those little black pieces you're going to put in a little cross into it so make two lines and that's how we're going to stick the tubing through and stick it in 
Next, you're going to go and spray paint the syringes. I used a metallic finish so that it looks more shiny, like similar to Toga's. Um, I would just recommend standing the syringes up instead of laying them down because this kind of created a drippy look which I wasn't happy about so I had to spray paint them all over again. Next to make those little green covers on the syringes you're going to mark a dot on the syringe where you are going to start tracing the, um, the syringe onto the foam and then you're going to stop at that point and that's kind of how big that part of foam is going to be and then in the middle you're just gonna draw this little mountain thing um, it's you can kind of see it on the image but not that well but you're only gonna have that little mountain on two of them and then the other ones are going to have it cut off Finally, you're going to hot glue these cuffs that go around the syringes together and then you're going to take the little black rubber part that you had with the tubing in it and you're going to glue that shut the syringe and then you're just going to glue all three syringes well you have six in total but three and three so you're going to glue three together and that's what one side of the mask well not the mask but the scarf is going to be like and then i also um drilled holes into them afterwards so that they were more, more secure to the um, scarf so i would actually recommend doing this if you want this to be really durable and not fall apart while you're cosplaying now on to the jugs that hold the blood with togas blood sucking machine. So I took these two spray bottles from the Dollar Tree. They were literally just a dollar so I didn't really care if this didn't work out but I cut off to a certain point where I thought it kind of looked like her um, containers that held the blood and basically I just cut it off and then spray painted it with this hunter green and then made two slits in each of them so that I could feed the elastic band through. Then I also added two little round cylinder shapes to the side of them because I noticed that she had two more on the side but this is really optional if you want to do it. They kind of kept on falling off for me so to keep the tubes in place with the jugs I basically got a piece of craft foam, cut it in the circle shape of the little container and kind of glued it on but this didn't hold well so I used some foam board but this kind of also broke so I'm still looking for a solution to this so if you guys have any suggestions of what you guys used or what I could use please just leave it down in the comments below because I'm still looking for a solution for that. On to those little boxes that she has in the front. For the little cubes in the front I actually used craft foam and then punched a little hole into it so that it kind of gets those shapes but for the box itself I got some cardboard because I couldn't really find a box that shape and the sides I kind of made to centimeters to like three centimeters thick i didn't really make it that thick because i didn't want it to bother me and then the size of the box itself is the size of an index card so it's three by four inches i believe so it's not that big and like with the jugs you're going to cut two slits in the back so that you can feed that elastic band through and now finally to the teeth of Toga's scarf. Now I used styrofoam but you could use basically use anything. After I cut out the teeth out of styrofoam, well first there are four on the top, four round kind of teeth, and then five on the bottom but the fifth one is kind of pointy. And then there are three on the sides that are pointy and kind of weird looking so I kind of did a lot of research to see if I could get it as accurate as possible and I hope I did. 
But yeah, so after I was done cutting them out of styrofoam, I used some air dry clay, which was a white color, but it wasn't quite white yet because it's natural clay. So yeah, um, but basically it took me a while to get it mostly crack free. So if you're going to use this technique, just be really, really patient. Trust me, it will turn out great in the end. And then I used some white acrylic paint, painted over it, and then I used some clear um, fixative spray so that it would look kind of glossy. And lastly, you're just going to glue the teeth on with hot glue. Since the teeth are made out of styrofoam for me and the felt is also there, both of them are made out of plastic -y material, so they both kind of fuse together when I use the hot glue because both kind of melt, well, they kind of melt. They don't really melt, but they kind of melt when you use hot glue. So I hope you guys really enjoyed this video and it was helpful for you making your own Himiko Toga blood sucking machine. I hope to see many of your cosplays. If this tutorial helped you in any way make your Himiko Toga blood scarf, um, send me a picture on Instagram. My Instagram tag, I'll just put it somewhere here. <laughs> yeah. So that's basically it. So um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please put a like on it. Um, feel free to subscribe. I do lots of other fandom related content such as Harry Potter and then now more or less anime and I'll probably do much more. So yeah, be on the lookout for that. And yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and till next time. Bye!